I think we all get our education in many, many places, um, school being one of them, but the greater the greater amount of our education and certainly a writer's education comes from reading, being in a library and reading books from um, life experiences and from, from getting out there and trying it. So for me, working at the Phoenix was, uh, you know, one of my very first jobs as a writer And I was really learning on the job and having the experience of writing stories and having them published and seeing people's response, which made it very real, very different from, say, writing a journal or being in school and writing uh, college essays. This was really being part of the real world and, and publishing and having that experience. But it's, it's an ongoing thing, and I think everything, especially for a writer, everything you do, everything you read, and every word you write is aggregated into, into what would be described as your education. So I do think you find yourself learning unexpectedly, and sometimes that, that's the learning that resonates the most and um, that sticks with me the most because it comes as such a revelation. Uh, and, And I think that that in itself is a great reminder that learning and growing as a person and certainly learning and growing as a writer is an ongoing process and, 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 one that is that that doesn't follow a prescribed path it's observing it's listening it's taking in the world and that happens all the time and often not in the places that you would expect it to happen yes i've learned so much from reading and talking to people and working with so many different people Uh, I'm a very outgoing and inquisitive sort of person, so I'm always trying to understand how things are done in other places and what makes people tick, really. And having worked in Vietnam, I've become friends with so many people from so many different walks of life, and any stereotypical ideas you have before you work in one of these places will disappear once you live here for a certain amount of time and we also work with one of the seven countries on the band list and uh, I know people, I know quite a few very good people from this place and yes you do have a lot of hardship but the good people who are there are very good they're very resilient they face danger every day and they get on with their lives and I th- they get on with their lives and I think we need to realize that in the West we have very little to complain about compared to what other people have or don't have and uh, I'm very grateful for knowing what I do. agree with you. Uh, not we also, by interacting with other people especially other people who are not the same as us. We learn more about different cultures and to recognize that we are the same people as by different news organizations, news, uh, different magazines such as the National Geographic, Smithsonian, and other ones that focus on different aspects of science. And one of my favorite one is documentaries from the BBC uh, here in the United States, NOVA, and Nature, and the Smithsonian. So documentaries that explore different aspects of humanity 
different aspects of science, whether it's space, nature, or spirituality, or in going back into our history to explain history now what we think it is, but the actuality of the history. So unfortunately, some people are not able to see that, and they have a very big a very narrow-minded view of what things are. Instead of looking for the information, they are into, this is what I was told, and that's it. And this kind of people are the ones who create trouble for the world. Case in point, we have a president in the United States who believes that things should be the way he wants it to be, and apparently has some issue with his own ego. So this is my view from Chicago, Illinois, Holger Fialo. I agree with a lot of what you had to say here. Um, I think the, the kind of learning that we do that is unexpected does stick with us, and it stays with us the longest, and we tend to never forget it, and it also tends to change our lives. Not only does it stay with us, but it influences how we act in future. Um... And I would also say that there are so many places where we learn, and I do learn, personally I learn a lot from the observations, um, being able to watch other people and how they react to certain things um, has taught me a lot about what I feel is acceptable and what is not acceptable. And to be honest, um, I think learning has to be fluid, and it has to be ongoing. It has to be fluid because if it's attempted to go down a prescribed path, then you're immediately limiting yourself. You're immediately saying, I can learn this much about these specific things, and then either I must move on or the learning experience is over. This is not good. Learning has to be a fluid experience, and it has to be an ongoing thing. Because the moment that it ceases to be either of these things, you're experiencing an intellectual death in my opinion. And an intellectual death is very, very perilous. And it can be fixed, but it ultimately destroys most other aspects of a person's life. Intellectual death means that you are no longer learning the fluid living language that, this, that is spoken by your peers. And you can no longer communicate as effectively along with lots and lots of other things. So, once again, I agree with you. Learning must be fluid, and it must be an ongoing experience. I get minds from the streets and the books.